Well, welcome to Mediaverse Podcast, the only podcast where we're still quarantined somehow. I am your host, Chris. Chris. Hello, I meant this is Chris. <laughs> nice. Gonna... <laughs> oh, nice, uh, quiet, what is that called? The quiet voice, the ASMR <laughs> or something? I don't know. I'm just thinking of a radio host or something just to lighten up the mood because we always have to do a different intro somehow. Every, every Yeah, week. I guess if you're Chris, I'm Kyle. <laughs> What up, YouTubers? This is your boy, Holla. <laughs> yo, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that button, yo. <laughs> Dog. Is that how YouTubers do it now? I, Rate this video. Support my Patreon. <laughs> I think the Patreon part is, I saw a video about pay, a commercial for Patreon where it's like, I'd rather eat my like for breakfast, for breakfast and like, wrong. I'm Kyle. Support my Patreon. Look up Large Shaft. <laughs> All right. Anyway, well, I'm Kyle. This is Chris. Um, always, Hello. we like to have a little fun here. Sometimes, little tangents, and sometimes. But uh, How today, are you? we are good. Today, we are talking about. Well, since everyone's been quarantined, if anybody's watching this video, we or listening to it on Spotify, once we get it on there, um, I believe it's pronounced spoofy. <laughs> Just kidding. Can you tell I watch Game Grumps sometimes? Whoops. Uh, I, th I think they're funny in small doses. Oh, I agree. I agree. Yeah. I agree on that one. Um, but um, yeah, we're gonna talk about games that have that are very long to play because we're under quarantine. Me and Chris are experts in that sphere because we love JRPGs, so we figured the best games that have long run is long, long, really long t run. You know. Run times, well, play times, play time actually are RPGs, and yes, trust me, we and these are also games that you can find digitally as well, so you can social distance and not have to worry about going to GameStop. That's the criteria for this list. We'll be we'll each be selecting five games that are available digitally. Yeah, um, we, we figured... across multiple platforms, but I think some of mine might only be on. PlayStation, but I think actually, most for the of, most part, most of mine are available across all platforms and possibly even PC, except for one of them. I only have one that's exclusively for PlayStation 4, but just because it's really good, and also it's most people have PlayStation 4 these days anyway, so it's indeed so. And this game should have been on Switch as well. And I I do believe that myself, so. But I guess, uh, we'll as always, on, we'll get on with the news. We'll start. We'll start with the low news and start with, and then work our way up. We'll start with the scalping of switches right now. Yeah, this shit is stupid and annoying, to be perfectly honest. Oh yeah, scalp. Just scalping in general, if you think about it. It always happens with Nintendo stuff too. Yeah, um, amiibos. Yeah, and the NES Classic. Yep. Uh, Thank God. Thank God the Super NES didn't, that didn't happen with the Super NES. Yeah, I mean, the NES one soured one of my friends so badly on Nintendo stuff that he just, like, refuses to buy it now. Wait, how did it sour him? Because, like, it was one of those things where uh, a lot of people wanted a classic Nintendo, and, of course, Nintendo only made... You know, a limited supply of it. Oh, the original NES. Okay. I thought yeah. NES. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't blame him on that. It had a lot of good games on there. It's just, this is the problem. Oh, it's Disney or Nintendo. Let's scalp these things. It, like, oh my God. It, it really sucks when you see stuff. Um, you know, to anybody that wants to switch that badly, I, I mean, I briefly was maybe actually going to buy one before this quarantine like really started going into it but now i see they're selling for 500 bucks so unfortunately just wait it out or buy something else if you don't have a game console yeah hey i would say uh this is a good one and this is not in the news but here's a dumb recommendation i would say if you have a gmail account you can get google stadia for two months for free but make sure if you your internet can support it. Yeah, if your internet can support it, but still, like, they said they're going to also lower it down to 4K. I'm like, this is what Google should have done in the first place anyway, so. Yeah. But what do we know? Like, 
people got burned by it, so now people who have who have G who have like a Gmail account like can have it. Apparently, yeah. Apparently, apparently they were sending them out to people who had YouTube Premium. So, but yeah. yeah so, but the good thing is, it's like the good thing is they're not gonna. They're just gonna send it around uh, 1080p. And you get two free games out of it, which is also you get three free games out of it. You also get Destiny Two, so this will actually give people something to do. So, as much as like, like I don't like the Google Stadia and how they're doing it, and everything, I do say right now is the perfect time to do try Google Stadia. Perfect. Yeah. So. Um, well, let's move on. Yep. Yep. Let's move on. Like, like I said, I figured that'd be a good thing right there. Yeah. But um, let's move on. Uh, the PlayStation Sense controller. Dual Sense controller. Dual yeah. What do you like, think? This is actually a massive departure controller wise for the PlayStation. If you think about it. Is like, it? It's a bigger controller. They're they're putting stuff from the Vita onto it. Like, you know, the see through like D pad. Also, like also like I'm not saying like, you know, revert you know off tilt or controllers, but with the way it like looks aesthetically too, like usually it's a single color controller. It has two colors now, which is going to be white on top and black on the bottom. Yeah, um, I guess the main thing with the DualSense controller is all about the haptic feedback. Yeah, and that's, um, and that stuff that stuff is in the Switch a little bit, but not like as like people would think, and also. I think Xbox actually had like a little bit of haptic feedback because if you play racing games, you could actually feel it a little bit. Well, from what I know, I thought the Switch controller only had 3D rumble. Haptic feedback is when you press a button and you feel more resistance. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, so. Yeah, and also I know haptic feedback also is like, also is also, believe it or not, are in VR games too. Yeah, well... It makes sense, but I, do you know if all the buttons are going to have haptic feedback or just the triggers? I think right now it'd be the triggers. So it's like yeah. following a, like if you're doing, like for example, for the good example, like, and it's actually a like great example, um, Horizon Zero Dawn 2 or Zero One. <laughs> Sorry, I do bad jokes. I don't get it. <laughs> No, Horizon Zero Dawn, zero. So I said zero one. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was doing a sequel joke. Anyway, when you pull down the when you pull down the like string of a bow, you'll feel it through the controller. So like, yeah, you're feeling it like that. That's like a good example of how it's gonna be working. Um, the weirdest, the most interesting thing is they put a microphone into the controller. Yeah, so you can talk into it. I, I thought the PlayStation 4 controller had a microphone, but I guess that was just a speaker, not an yeah, actual microphone. That was a speaker. It was it's there for like certain games and everything. Like I know Infamous 2 used it. Um also 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 like just Infamous 2 or just like or like I know uh, um Middle Earth uh, battle battle for Mordor was actually used it so when like you are like when the spirits are, like talking to you you actually hear it for the controller and, uh, like, a ton of games used it even Dragon Quest Heroes used the microphone oh yeah a lot of games did like but uh getting on to the dual sense controller so the main thing will be haptic feedback and 3d rumble yeah also the I think aesthetically the controller does look cool. Yeah, um, no, that's why I said it's, this is a drastic departure for Sony aesthetically. I, I mean, I guess color-wise and shine, but it still has more or less the same shape. Yeah, it still it, has that PlayStation. Yeah. Like, like I just mean, like, it's a little bit of departure, like what you normally see. Like, I have, believe it or not, I actually have the DualShock 4 right here for a good example. And then yeah. you have, oh, what do you know? Then you have Sony, Sony going through the years of PlayStation One to PlayStation Three. Yeah. So I mean, that was that was the standard for you know a while. Uh, that PlayStation Three design. I think yeah. it's slightly smaller than the DualShock Three. 
or slightly, well, yeah, the DualShock 3 is slightly smaller, but the DualShock 2 was a little bit bigger. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, the DualShock 1 went through two iterations. There yep. was the original version that was just the, um, I guess it was the analog controller, yeah. and then they made DualShock controller. Yeah, I actually um, remember seeing that thing and how huge it was, the original version. Yeah, it had, like, long little dealies like that, uh, which was weird. Uh, I guess trying to look a little bit like the N64 controller yeah. or something like that. Yeah, because at the time, Nintendo was like, hey, we have analog, and Sony's like, why did not we think of that? Yeah. I think it's interesting that the controller they showed is white. Yeah, um, and, and, and black. That's why I said two colors. So that yeah, makes you... So- that makes you I wonder, wonder what the console looks like. Yeah. Is it going to be a white console, or are you going to have two designer colors, maybe? It probably might be two designer colors, and who knows? It might be the V. It might be that dev kit that makes it look like a V, and a lot of people are like, I want that. I'm like, no, you don't. You, you know what was one thing I was wondering about with a PlayStation 5? What's that? You know, they're trying to jam so much technology into these things, and they're, they're still going to use discs. Yeah. Do you think to bring down the price, they might go with a um, not a motorized disc intake and just have like a pop open lid? That could work. I mean, just to save money. I mean, yeah, I, I seriously doubt they would, but I, mean, I was just wondering about um, to keep that price down if that's something that they could you know, say like, oh, we made it white and we kind of made it an homage to the original PlayStation and it has like a pop-open thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah, this is actually the first time Sony, like, no, yeah, this is the first time Sony would actually have something that's just, how would you say, not modular, but, you know, removable? Like, pop, you know, like what a pop-up. Try to think of the pop-up lid, thinking, like... Uh, well, the last system they had with, like, a pop-open lid was the PlayStation, PlayStation. 3 Slim. Or I like to call it the George Foreman. That's what everyone calls that thing, actually. Yeah, so I, I just wonder if that's something maybe they might do, but who knows? Uh, I, I I wouldn't be surprised if it does have a motorized disc uh, intake like all the other systems, yeah. but yeah. it's something I just think about just because of how much technology is just in the controller now that I wonder if the actual box, the safe money, they're like, well... You pop it open like the old days and then put your disc in. Yep. But who knows? Yeah. That is that is true. I mean, like I said, when we probably won't see the... Uh... Oh, that's right. There's something I just remembered in my head while we're talking. I'm sorry. I should have told you about this, but um, you remember E3, right? Yes. Yes, I do. Well, E3 got canceled yet again. What do you mean, for like 2021? For 2020, no, for 2020, because um, what happened was they were going to do a digital event, and then all of a sudden, like, yeah, we're canceling our digital event. So they were going to do a digital event this year, even though they had a thing that said, like, we'll see you at E3 2021. Yeah, they had something in mind, and all of a sudden, sorry. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. I mean, it's been really crazy. I mean, the guy who orchestrated, like, E3 and everything, like, the company, I Am 8-Bit, literally just left. And they were like, hey, even though this guy just left, we are re- we are dedicated to reinventing E3. Yeah. yeah this is a sign that E3 knows they're going to be gone. And I feel like this year, in general, is that um, we're going we're gonna to find out, like, all the companies are like, why do we need E3 when we could just broadcast here in June? Yeah, save a couple, save some bucks, and... I mean, Nintendo, it's been working for Nintendo pretty well. There's that IGN event apparently yeah. happening yeah, that's, uh, in May, or... Yep, that's the thing, that was the thing that IGN kind of came in and said, we're going to try to save E3 with our own version of E3. Yeah. So. That would be very interesting to see uh, how that goes. Yeah, right now all the people at IGN, even the new casters are all doing their jobs from home now. Yeah. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. So, our last thing we're going to talk about, sorry, I kind of went into a a left turn there. It's yeah. going to be AMC and how they could possibly going into bankruptcy. 
This is nuts. Um, yeah. You know, they're the biggest theater chain in the United States, and apparently the article said it is very likely that AMC will file for bankruptcy because of the uh, coronavirus. Yeah. I didn't know they were walking on such a razor's edge um, with everything, especially since they renovated a bunch of theaters pretty recently. Yeah. Um, um, you have more experience with AMC as a company since you have – you were formerly employed there, so yeah, like, what do you think of everything, Kyle? It really, it, 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 it like in general, like this kind of crushes me because I love AMC as a company because like they like the the like the management they have very good values over there and everything. Even though they have to be open on Christmas and everything, but they have good value. They treat their employees like pretty well, actually, and like they actually do give their employees raises over there when I worked there. So like. They actually like like that, and I actually talked to people that actually came from Kansas City corporate actually one time. So, wow, yeah. So like it, it's kind of like it it's kind of harsh on everybody. So, like to me, seeing AMC is gone. It's like a part of me, a part of my life going away too. I know it's kind of sad. Do you think movie theater uh, movie studios will let the largest theater in? you know, America just go out of business, though? I don't think so. I yeah, because I, I feel like one of these movie theater, uh, movie studio, will have to maybe, or maybe they'll all come together and bail them out, because you're going to lose There's so a much huge money amount money. of screens. Yeah, like, you got to remember, like, and we, we talked about this, like, if we do get out of this by June or May, um, don't forget Disney's first movie is Mulan. And Mulan will get butts in at theaters very, very fast. Yeah. I, then, I mean, there's another thing I think people probably are not accounting for, but, you know, I don't know how willing people will be to immediately go into, like, a public place with a lot of people, like, all together, in, like, pretty close proximity after this. I think... Like, a, a few months before people start feeling a little safe I, about it. I think what AMC is probably going to do is what they were doing before for staying open. And as much as they, they needed to shut down, I applaud them for actually doing this, which, you know, they were, they were practicing social distancing actually, yeah. actually, and cutting their seats by 50%. I think what they're going to do, if they get out of this alive with other companies, they'll just cut all the seats by 50%. And every movie company has to do this. If they don't, then, you're you're no good than the comp than the big company that's like no give me money now where we need the money now I'm like you don't think about people you profit before people you know yeah so um, we'll, we'll see what happens when this finally yeah. you know we're finally out of this but I uh mean, I mean I know one movie that could actually get them out of out of debt it's probably like you be like, but it's the only company that can do it. You know, like not out of debt, but you know, get butts in the theaters immediately, and you and me will agree on this. Black Widow, because it's Marvel. If Marvel proved anything, their name alone will prove their their name alone proves that they are trusting in their brand and everything. Like remember, Guardians of the Galaxy. That's gonna be Marvel's first flop. I'm just talking about you know. Here's the thing: if they were like Black Widow's coming out and the quarantine just ended. I'd probably think twice about going to a movie theater. Yeah. And just so you know, that comes out in November. Yeah. So they switch all the dates. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, that would be the movie that I think everybody would just go and see it immediately. Maybe. But I, I think people are going to be a lot more hesitant about going back to the theater than a lot of people think. No, you're, you are right, though. I'm just saying I know the one movie that's a guarantee, though. Not like a guarantee. guaranteed. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will do well, but you know, yeah. I I really think there's going to be some like long term effects to this pandemic. I mean, just going to the grocery store is, oh, yeah. it's insane. Like I thought people would have stopped panic buying by now, but when I went today, you know, it it was it was more cleared out than ever, and I was like, I was like, holy shit, like. Like, yeah. people are still panic buying everything. And, you know, we're 
about four weeks into this. So, yep, we're one month into this, and like, yeah, and you're right. It's, it's so I'm just wondering with like a movie theater, like, yeah, I, I'm sure a ton of people want to see Black Widow, but at the same time, a lot of people are like, well, maybe I'll just wait for it to be on demand instead of, you know, Disney Plus. risking getting, you know, coronavirus, even though, like, you know, they say it's okay because. You know, you're pretty close to people at the movie theater. You oh, know? yeah. Yeah, you are. I mean, you are. You're, like, literally next to them. Like I said, if they just do what ANC and Cinemark just did, where they took, like, and this is every movie theater, do the cut cut down everything by 50, like, 50%. I think they'll be, I, I like I said, I, like, you know, when you start going back up, you'll, I think that it'll be fine. I said, like, 50%. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I mean, confidence will eventually be restored, but, you know, I, I can see tickets going down substantially for at oh, least yeah. for at least a year after this, you know? Yeah. It, it might be a while before we see, like, a, you know, $200 million opening for a movie again Yeah. after this. Banking on but who knows? Man. Yeah, who knows what will happen, but I, I feel... You know, this will change movie theater experience for a lot of people. Well, we've seen that right now, actually, with uh, with all the movies that are supposed to come out, like coming out now, like Sonic got its runtime cut, and then that instead of it getting launched on um on dig and you know instead of it getting launched like physically, they just launched it digitally like like two weeks afterward, which I did buy. My one problem with it is that you can only buy it. And even though I plan on buying the Silent and Hedgehog movie anyway after seeing it, um, my problem is it's like they're also charging like twenty dollars for a rental fee for some yeah. of movies. So they're trying to charge you a premium. The th company's trying to charge you a premium just to watch a movie. But Which, if it's a brand new movie, maybe it will become the norm. I mean, I could see the price being even higher. It's like, hey, you want to watch Black Widow at home? It's going to be forty large. <laughs> And then it's like, bucks, okay, maybe. fine. I'll have like a party. I'll be like, all right. Yeah. People that I know that are healthy come by. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> what I was about to say. Actually. And watch Black Widow. That's what I was about to say. Like, if you think about it, like if you have four people in your house, my mom was like, oh, that's expensive. But mom, you don't understand. If you have like four people in your house, then we can like four. I just said that as like an example. Like that's $5 each for each person to go to a movie. Yeah. And yeah, invite and, some people over, you yeah. know. Yeah, exactly. You know, I'll fight you over, Kyle. I'll fifty percent off on bathroom tokens for you, right? <laughs> what is this game? microtransaction with a theater now? <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh my god! I talked about that actually. If we applied microtransactions to movie theaters, and oh my god, all the employees are like, "Holy shit!" Caution would be pissed off. Yeah, now you wonder how gamers are too now. <laughs> yeah, but um. You know, it, it is very weird with the movie theater industry, and I just wonder what will ultimately happen with the AMC yeah, uh, I'm going sure forward, sure. and just in general with all theaters after this, you know? Yeah, I'm wondering, like, my old job, I actually gave all my friends that I used to know either left. I have, like, two or three that are still there. I'm actually concerned about them right now because they lost their, they lost their job due to this whole pandemic. They're, they're still, they'll get rehired back, no problem, but I wonder if that theater is uh, going to shut down in Howell because, like, they – like, I know the company very well. I know the corporate company, it, like, from hearing from my managers and everything. And, oh, my God, the stories I could just tell you right now. I wish I didn't like, get any of my <laughs> yeah. in trouble. Escape's a pretty small movie theater chain. Uh, it's not really locked to a region, but it is very weird that we have one – in yeah. New Jersey, in, like, Howell Township, of all places. Uh, yeah, it's nice. It is yeah. nice. It is yeah. nice that it's there. It's like, it's just, it just sucks that the, the way they're treated, the, the corporate treats their employees. That I will not. Yeah. I have no shame of saying that. I was one of yeah. the victims right there, and I'm glad I left. Indeed. So, but, uh, let's get going to on? Today, let's get to today's subject. RGP, all right, RGP is perfect for quarantine. I have, I will bring up one of them, which is probably one you played, actually, which is Digimon Cyber Sleuth. Cyber Sleuth. Digimon Cyber Sleuth. That okay. is, it, it's a pretty good game. Um, 
it, it's the Digimon game I always wanted as a kid. Yeah, I recommend because I it's recommend more like it. Pokemon than yeah. Digimon. <laughs> it's on PS4. It's on PC. It's also on Switch. So it's, it's about a seventy to eighty hour game. Um, it's, to be honest, it's not super spectacular. No, it's, it's not. kind of a good game if you just want to play something and also listen to a podcast, especially yeah. if you're just trying to like train up Digimon and see what you can make. Oh yeah, I I had hours trying to just make War Greymon, then I made other Greymons, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I it, it's it's okay. Uh, I don't know how much you would like lose yourself in the game, but because you lose. have the time. It definitely is something that it's like, hey, I finally have time to, like, you know, play this, like, I think when I finally stopped playing it, I had pretty close to, like, 80 or 90 hours on the game, and that was, you know, three months of gameplay, maybe even more than that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, like, near getting near the end of that game, too, which is, I should get back into it. But the one yeah. problem I think people are going to have with it, and this is just people in general, is it ha- doesn't have an English it doesn't have an English language. It only speaks in Japanese, but it has English letter, the English alphabet and everything. Yeah. Like, that's what throws some people off. Like, there's people that prefer dub over sub, you know, or yeah. the other way around. And, like, like that, I can understand, would throw them off a little bit. But watching Digimon Evolve is great, though. I can admit to that. Yeah, it's fun when you finally make the team you want. And it's also cool seeing how many different paths of evolution there are for each Digimon. Yeah. I mean, um, I, when I got to finally making Dio Boromon, I was just like, oh, yes. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. Well, I guess I'll do one now. Yeah, we'll, do, um, we'll go back and forth. So I'll, I'll just put this up on the screen. I know you can get this digitally. This is Ease 8. Um, also this on game, Twitch. This game, yeah, it's on Switch. I think it's even on PC. It is. I'm not 100 percent sure about it that, is. but it, it is. It is. I was on Steam the other day looking up RPGs. I, I'm a person that this is the first time I got into the E series, and this game's really fun. You don't really need to know anything about the other Eats games. You're <clears throat> stuck on a like desert island pretty much with like a mysterious secret. Um there's like a ton of stuff to do in this game uh, to survive. And, you know, this game will probably take you, I would say, 70 to 80 hours if you're going for all the stuff in the game. It might even be a little bit longer than that. Uh, I know there's some post-game stuff that I never actually did. But maybe I'll do it now since, uh, you know, got some extra time. Yeah, yeah. And also just... Just so for everybody knows, because I have this on Switch. Um, if you get the Switch version, all the DLCs on there immediately, so you don't have to worry about downloading any of that. DLC in Ease a, like as far as I know, it's just yeah, it's just costumes and extra supplies. But yeah, but it's good to know. It's just good to tell them, hey, you don't have to buy the costumes. You know, it's an interesting world to explore. It has really fun, fast-paced combat. It's not like music. a turn-based RPG. Yeah, it has great music. Yeah, the music is phenomenal. I love it. Yeah. yeah definitely, uh, you can lose yourself in this game. And the story is actually pretty interesting. Um, but the exploration of the game is really where it shines. You actually get different abilities to help you traverse the uh, world map. You know, eventually yeah. you're like, you'll find a place and be like, wait, I can like swim underwater? But then you need like an item to like stay underwater, and you know you'll see ledges that are like really high, and yeah. then eventually you get double jump, Stuff which is cool. Places places where they're blocked, but you need a different item to get it unblocked. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. I, should, uh, I gotta jump I definitely back. Definitely recommend that. it. I definitely gotta jump into that. Like it's a good game. Like I just, uh, you know. Yeah. Um, I guess I'll go up. This one is highly recommended. Chris, you you I don't you probably haven't watched the whole Witcher series, but Witcher no. three Witcher three I would recommend actually. I have it on digital. It's right now as the recording of this podcast of April of April tenth, twenty twenty. It is fifteen dollars. So if anybody's listening to this at this time, it is fifteen dollars game of the year edition. Uh, no, the complete edition it's called. They don't do game of the year. And this company, even if you could find it physically, I 
Like you, they always reward. They will always reward its player, its players with stuff. Like you'll get physical stuff. Like it, like if you get the physical copy, you get like a map and stuff. But the point is, it's digital, and you'll get all the concept you can get. Like, like the complete edition will give you all the DLC and everything. Uh, also the expand the expansions are also like additional stories that are just as big as the original game. Nice. Yeah, and like the game is massive. Uh, your PlayStation Four will take off like a jet engine. It is on PC, Xbox, Xbox. Which I would... I've, I've heard the game referred to as like uh, Skyrim esque. Is that accurate to describe it? Exploring, yes, it's Skyrim s but like it's very fascinating because like at least with this, like the world is very fascinating, and they're also based on the Polish books of the game from The Witcher. Yeah, which is. Which is good because if you know the content, you know you know about the Witcher itself. Like the combat's really good. The first boss you face is a giant griffin, and you you do, you do like a whole monster hunt thing where you try to track him down, bring him down, and you also have to chase him too. Like it's amazing. Nice. Yeah, like and cool. by the end you actually get to cut the griffin's head off and put it on your horse. It's pretty cool. Yeah, and like I said, Geralt is. Like, depending on your decision, can be either be a real dick or just an outstanding guy who's a dick. Yeah. So that's from that's my experience cool. so far. I want to go back into it eventually because it's a huge, huge world. All right. Yeah. Your turn. That's all, all right. traditional stuff. Just so you well, know. this is not a traditional RPG, but I lost myself in this game doing so much useless stuff. I've never beat this game. However, I have more trophies than Kyle in the game just because of how much content there is to do in the game. I know. This is Yakuza Kiwame. Oh, and I feel like this is like the perfect game to play during a quarantine because oh, yeah, I you will keep finding weird stuff in the city. You'll keep having battles with Mishima. I mean, I've done so much in this game and I'm not even close to actually beating the story. But I've done so much extra stuff in the game just by, like, exploring the city, which, to be fair, the city's not that big, but it's very lively. And there's a lot of stuff going on in the city. Yeah. Um, I recommend the whole y- – actually, here. I recommend the whole Yakuza series, including Judgment. Well, I think I think this is the best one to start with. This one is always on sale on PlayStation, and they even gave it away for free uh, yeah. one month. Yeah, but, you know, I told people to buy it. My buddy uh, Aaron from when I used to work at Xscape was like, Yakuza? I was like, yep. He's like, I'm going to go download it. One week later, he beats it. And he tells me, that is such an amazing game. That game is so manly. Why? Yeah. Are, like, I would recommend this game to anybody. Like, like it's because it's so weird. And like the creator of Yakuza said, this game, re- like, literally... um literally imitates life itself where it gets very serious sometimes but then when you take the the right turns in life it gets really weird and bizarre i can tell yeah. you with yakuza 6 i have fought with a giant squid i am not even lying about that yeah underwater with a harpoon like yeah that the other sequels get crazy but like if you just want to jump two, in i i would two. recommend kiwame kiwame uh, yes kiwame good or starting Zero. point and you know, you could get lost in the city just constantly doing side quests. Trust me. I think I'm on, like, chapter 5, and I've probably played the game for at least, like, 30 hours just doing side quests. Just so you know, Kiwami 2 gets weirder. You'll be like, no. no. Yeah. And this is the real story, and this is, like, in the real story. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Are you for realing me right now? Yeah, Yakuza Kiwami is definitely one of those games I plan to finish, depending on how long this goes on, since, you know, I have the time on the weekend now uh, to play these. So, eventually, uh, I probably will pop this back in and continue where I left off with my battles with Mishima and just doing weird side quests. And, Mishima is everywhere. You know, <laughs> yeah, no. unlocking all the host uh, stuff, which I already did. You know, Sachi? <laughs> Two things I gotta tell you. Um, Yakuza 3, the original original US release for the PS3, they took out the host stuff. Oh, really? Yeah, they're like, I don't think Americans would appreciate this. And then they took the backlash, like, uh-oh. 
I guess Americans do appreciate Japanese culture. So nice. And also, um, in the box, I'll have to send it to you later. In the box of the Yakuza remaster, because they put they put they put back the host code, by the way, in Yakuza three. So but in the box of 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 uh of uh Yak of Yakuza, the Yakuza remaster collection, um Mishima's in the box. Like, yeah, nice. He's there mocking you. Mishima's everywhere, man. It's pretty like, fun. Yeah. All right. I got one that's for all those D and D players, if they need to get their D and D fix. Divinity Original Sin. I played a bit of this game right now, and um, this game is like a turn-based Diablo-style game, and they have characters set up. You can play any of the characters in the game, or you can make your own character have his own little backstory. You all get stranded on a little island and everything like that. Um, Turn-based battles. You can play, th and also, if also this is also great for those social distancing, you could actually do four-player co-op in this game. And this game lets you do whatever the hell you want. Like, you want to make a broken character? Go for it. You want to make a, um, you want to, you want to burn the place down? Go for it. It's your story. You do whatever you want to do. Thanks. Yeah. So, and this game was also, this game started off as a Kickstarter series. Like. It's interesting. Uh, is that a, um, so MMO? MMO? No, no, no. It's like a, it's, it's more like a regular game. It's like a regular single player game and you could play it. As a regular game, hmm. with people. That's why Mike wanted to play it. He's like, "Oh, it has co-op." And I oh, told Mike, "Don't okay. be surprised if I don't play if I, if I start playing Persona Four Royal." That's when I put this game down. Yeah. And it was the worst time he got because I got Persona Five Royal. Well, it's cool. Yeah. Um. Well, I guess the next game. Uh, we all know that a certain remake of a Final Fantasy is coming out this week. But if you want a cheaper Final Fantasy, I highly recommend Final Fantasy XV. Yep. This game, you will lose hours just driving around with your bros, monster hunting, doing quests. This game is really good. In fact, um, I, I'm probably the worst person to talk about Final Fantasy sometimes because according to the internet, I always have the wrong opinion. Uh, because usually the most recent Final Fantasy is my favorite one. This is my favorite one right now, uh, Final Fantasy XV. I really like it. Uh, it's open world, and it works super well. Um, you can it's, drive. You it's... can do camping and fishing and cooking. A ton of weird stuff, but like monster hunting, it is an amazing game that, you know... If you need a long game with, like, a ton to do, this is, like, Final Fantasy Breath of the Wild in many ways, except you have technology and not, and like, weird ancient technology, just, like, real technology. I would recommend grabbing the Royal Edition so because they have some really interesting, like, DLC that actually adds more to your party, actually. Yeah, yeah, definitely. If uh, I'm sure that uh, edition is probably discounted online, uh... You know, I know the PC version, if you have a PC that can run, you know, crazy intense graphics, it's probably the best version. However, you know, PlayStation, Xbox, you can get that game on it, too. Super cheap. It's also you can cool. even get Pocket Edition on Switch if you want to play Final yeah. Fantasy XV in a weird way. Don't forget, don't forget, it took them, like, about 15 years to get Final... No, it wasn't 15 years, or it was a 10 year, 10 to... 13, 14 years to get Final Fantasy. Because remember, that game used to be Final Fantasy versus 13. Yeah, there's a whole history behind the development of Final Fantasy 15, but um, it's a, it's an just in it was yeah, just in general though, Final Fantasy 15 is definitely worth playing. Yeah. It you know right now it's my favorite Final Fantasy. Um, all the characters are fun and cool. Um, yeah, I love I love no I love Noxus. I love. Pa uh, I can't remember the party's name, but I love them. The show, like, it's been a while. Yeah, there's, there's, there's Pronto, and then uh, Gladio, Gladio, and then Ignis, and yeah, yeah they're all fun. Yeah, uh, no. even like some of the characters you meet, like doing quests and everything, are cool. And the you villain, have a have an awesome car. Yep. Yeah. Even it's, the villain is probably like if you actually pay attention enough, 
he's actually one of the most interesting villains of Final Fantasy. Of Final Fantasy, if you pay attention to his back, his actual backstory. Yeah, the the story does get a little convoluted towards the end. Oh, however, yeah. you it's... can. You, I spent most of the game just doing my own thing until I was like finally like. Oh, I'm level 80. I probably should, like, beat the game, so... I was, with, I was, like, in between that because the game was so massive. Like, I was just like, I love this game. Yeah, but uh, Final Fantasy XV, definitely a good quarantine. You know, you can do all the stuff you wish you could do outside, like, you know, yeah. fishing and Killing and a hiking giant rock monster. And going to a hotel <laughs> and all like, the stuff. Playing, playing your cell phone game at the hotel with your bros. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and also don't forget it has a multi, and they actually made the multiplayer uh, comrades free actually now for everybody. You don't even have to own the game. Well, that's cool. Yeah. I've never tried that, but it's uh... all right. It's it was definitely their way of testing the ground with multiplayer with Final Fantasy. Wait, as a like a regular Final Fantasy, I felt like that should have not been charged in the first place. Part of the uh, season pass. Yeah, and it was should have been something that should have been given for free as part of the package. Nice. Like okay. So I got one. This one is for all you anime fans. You'll like my decision on this one. <laughs> I might have had that game in my pile. <laughs> oh, God. I guess we're going to have to both talk about this. This is yeah. probably what Tales everyone of... was... <laughs> Tales you can Definitive see... Edition. You can see that we love this game. Yeah. You can it's see... a long game. <laughs> yeah. This is probably one of my favorite Tales games. Like, my second favorite. This is everyone's favorite game. My favorite game would be Tales of the Abyss. The only way to get that digitally is on the 3DS, but I'd rather give everybody I know everybody would like it. This is actually one of Troy Baker's, like... It, Troy Baker's actually in the game as Yuri Lowenthal. And, That's uh, not the character's name, Kyle. His Yuri. name is Yuri... Yuri Lowell. Not Yuri Lowenthal, Lowell. like oh, wait, the actor. Heard, yeah, <laughs> well, they, you know they named him after the actor, right? They just changed it a little bit. That's why it sounds the like... The Japanese people named yeah. him after the actor? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's weird. Let's see who has the English voice actor of Sasuke. Can we get the English actor of Sasuke to play himself? Yeah. It would have been so weird just seeing that now. But Troy, hmm. it was one of Troy Baker's roles before he got super big, believe it or not. And yeah. he got so big that he didn't return to do the additional scenes. The guy, yeah. you could tell the guy is trying, though. Well, apparently they didn't even ask him. But uh, just going on what this game's actually about... This is a Tales game. It's a it's an action based RPG. Um, this is more in the lines of something like Tales of Symphonia. So there is still the world map. Um, yeah, old school. And this game will take you about seventy to eighty hours to complete. Probably even more than that. There's of course tons of secrets. Um, Additional content in there. Yes, there are two new characters in this version, unlike the Xbox version. Um, yeah, this game is really fun. This is, it, it's this is based on definitely the one of them. I was oh. gonna say this is based on the Japanese PlayStation report we never got here in America. Yeah, um, this is one of the more interesting Tales game. Uh, the main character and all the characters are actually pretty interesting, except for maybe Carol, but yeah. you don't need to use him. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, sometimes Tales games have a bad habit of character being super annoying and then the other characters being cool but this game you actually like the main character yep um yuri's really cool so you can relate to anybody can actually kind of relate to yuri a little bit if you think about it yeah this version has the english and japanese if you're into that if you're a jap if you're an anime purist yeah like me but, i don't uh, mind english like yeah it, it's super cool though they have the new uh, character one Patty. of the best tales games uh New character Patty's in there, which she's apparently the granddaughter of Captain Ivory. Yeah. Which he gets mentioned in like every game, so a lot of the Tales games um mention him. Yeah. In fact, uh I don't know if every Tales game is considered the same world, but the ones that do mention Captain Ivor or Ivory, um, you know. It, they're loosely connected, I guess, but each one takes place like pretty far away from each other. Yeah, so if you're looking Except for other ones... Except for the newest new, newest series, like uh, Zestia, Zestia and 
Bazaria. Bazaria, yeah. yeah, or Berserkia. I, I can never get it. I'm pretty sure it's uh, Bazaria. It's like B R S E A. No, I A. So. Yeah, no, yeah, it's Bazaria. Yeah. Yeah, but that one, but you don't have to play Zestia. It's Zestia wasn't really like that good. Like the twist at the end is really good, but the journey really isn't worth it because they do a lot of like it switching in and out with between characters and everything. Yeah, um, if you wanted to play one of the newer ones, I would recommend uh, you know, Tales of Bazaria over Zestia. But and that's a prequel too, so you don't have to worry. Yeah, about but if you want to play one that is actually really good. Uh, Vesperia is the way to go. Yeah, it's it's very good. All right, Chris, get your get your thing out. Well, I I actually had a backup game just in case we oh, uh, just to, we oh, picked well, the same game. Yeah. Um. That. Although this game I only have available uh, digitally, but it's uh, Star Ocean: The Lo- Last Hope, uh, 4K edition for PlayStation Four. Oh um, yeah, you could. I you could get that. I think you can maybe get it on PC, but I'm not 100 percent sure. But no, you can get it on. I think you can. I'll next time I'll check though. Yeah, but this is available as a digital download on PlayStation 4. Uh, Star Ocean 4. Uh, it's called Star Ocean: The Lost Last Hope. I think it's the most underrated Star Ocean game because it has incredible graphics, even on the 360 version. Yeah, and then um, if you and then when you compare it to like um, Star Ocean 5, which is the weakest of them all. It's like you're on a harder you're 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 the newest version you're mm, down Yeah, there. so Star Ocean uh Last Hope is it's a long game. It's going to be 70 hours. Uh the characters are pretty interesting. Uh the visuals are really good, especially on the PlayStation 4 version. Um oh, yeah. battle system and- is super fun. Uh if you played any of the Star Ocean games, these are uh, action-based RPGs. And, In the vein of tales. Yeah, but it definitely does its own thing yeah. uh, with the formula. That's why I said in vein uh, of tales. Yeah, yeah, but uh, this game made me lose track of my thoughts here, Kyle. But uh, yeah, a great battle system has a really cool thing called blindsight that you have to get used to uh, for kind of performing certain combos on enemies. Uh, probably the most uh, epic Star Ocean. It's a prequel to all the other Star Oceans. Takes place right after World War Three. Yep. Um, I remember. I remember watching that opening cinematic. I was like, Yeah. What? It, it, it definitely feels like if you played Star Ocean until the end of time on PS2, this feels like the better version of Star Ocean until the end of time. It takes a lot of the mechanics until the end of time and really refines them. The battle system is like till the end of time, except, uh, you know, it's like cranked up and better. Uh, it has crafting like Star Ocean till the end of time, except now it's not impossible to do crafting like it is in Star Ocean till the end of time. Yep. So if you're going to play a Star Ocean game, I would definitely recommend Star Ocean a lot. Last yeah. Hope. It's the best one to start with because it's, a prequel and it's probably the greatest one to play just because everything's been streamlined it's not dumbed down like star ocean 5 is where you know star ocean 5 will only take you 30 hours to complete and yeah. you're kind of like that's it what, and but like this stuff? game will take you a good 60 to 70 to complete and you know it has a pretty interesting story uh a lot of characters join your party in this game and all they over all over the galaxy yeah, and they're all cool. You actually do travel to different planets. Uh, there, to, there's a lot to this also, game. You also go to the very first planet from the very first Star Ocean, and they also put the original music in, too. Like, yeah, yeah. Which is actually really cool. When I heard that, I was like, this is actually when I started playing Last Departure. I was like, first Departure, sorry. I was like, yeah. listening. I was like, then I went back to the Rogue Planet. I was like, oh, by the way, this game does have one of the best protagonist names ever Ed <laughs> Maverick. It's kind of silly, um, but yeah, his name is Edge Maverick. It's just about as bad as Cypher Rage, but yeah. I, I, I assure you the game is actually cool, though. Yeah, I, like, trust me, uh, Edge is not an edgelord. We can guarantee you that. He, no. He's actually a very, he's like, he's more like, he gets better as the game goes along. He seems like he's serious, but then he gets better as he goes along. He shows that he cares. He's not as much of a beta male as a lot of 
for Star Ocean protagonists, are, which is interesting, which is weird to say about Star Ocean, but a lot of the protagonists are kind of like that. I don't know if that insults anybody, but that's the best way to describe Star Ocean protagonists, but Edge is different. Yeah. You know, he's not as reluctant to do stuff as like Fate or a uh, blonde haired guy from Star Ocean 2, Claude. That's his name, Claude. The best way to say it, he's the most human. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, he's been through some rough times because of World War Three. But yeah. uh anybody anybody if, listen, if anybody went through World War Three, it's like they'd be I wouldn't blame them. This game does have quite a bit of well known actors. Which yeah. is funny. Um, Laura yeah. Bailey is the female character. Matt Mercer. In the game. Matt Mercer. Yeah. For all you, all you, all you uh, Dungeons and Dragons fans that like to watch, uh, can't remember. It's a, he does a Dungeons and Dragons show. So. It's so that Critical Role thing. Crit- critical Role. This is before he started doing Critical Role. Actually, Matt Mercer plays Edge Maverick, and when you listen to his voice, you wouldn't think Matt Mercer, which is hilarious. Hmm. Interesting, but yeah, it, it, Star Ocean definitely a good game to play. And Star Ocean Lost, uh, Last Hope. I keep wanting to call it Lost Hope, but I think it's Last Hope. So yeah, it's Last Hope. So yeah. I got the game that I've been playing for a while. I get lost in this game, like when I played for this game when it first came out. This is a refined version, so I figured just put it up, even though it's more new. And you could get this easily digitally. It's Persona Five Royal Edition, and I got the steel book edition because i like it's a nice steel book yeah i like nice i like nice steel books and <laughs> i bought the phantom thieves edition because i love this game too much and i know i'm getting my money's worth out of it but um you start off his life as a high schooler that gets accused of a crime or not a crime accused of something very stupid and yeah so but you get all the dlc for the original game as well for this one um, you start off, like I said, like, I'm just going to start everything else really quick. You get all the DLC from the original game. You got to go to PlayStation Store, but it's free. So you can get that. Um, also, also, there's some really good voice actors are in here. Believe it or not, the guy who plays Joker is actually a Smash announcer for Super Smash Brothers. Does Joker actually talk in this version? He does. He talks a little bit here and there. He really? Can, yeah, he talks in the cutscenes, too. Huh, like interesting. Like not not like in sentences, but just brief like words, you know. Hmm. But it's a good game. It's you. It's a life simulation. So you you go through school and stuff as a Japanese high school student. The good thing about it is I learned a lot about Japanese high school life in there, like how their days go. Like apparently their only day off is actually Sunday. Yeah. Which I was like, wow. When I first started playing the Persona series, um, you put you so anyway. Anyway, you start going to school and everything, and you're on probation after a crime you've been accused of. I'm not going to spoil the mystery or anything, but this game really dives deep into, like, the society and everything, and also the themes of discovering oneself, hence the mask theme with the phantom themes and everything. Yeah. So, it like Chris will tell you, it'll play like a virtual novel. Slash yeah, fantasy. it's a little more visual novel than game, which doesn't really appeal to me but you know hey you got the time right now i can't go to work so yeah and also like also persona 5 but with persona 5 royal it's more of a redux so they changed some of the bosses up and the temple up they added they gave joker a grappling hook like they did with smash brothers so it gives them like more explanation and they added a new character to the game called uh kasumi and so far i met her a couple times you actually do meet her in the introduction stage before they go into the flashback so you so that gives the player who actually played the previous game is oh this is going to be a lot different yes yeah so it's pretty cool and i played this game like so much like when i got to like to like the the second to last boss i was like oh my god the themes i'm not going to go into politics it goes into politics but i'm not going to go into it i was just like jesus christ this reflects us too much Hmm. Like, I'm not going to say anything just on that. Chris, what's your last game you would recommend to everybody? Well, this is a pretty epic game. Everybody that has heard of this game knows how epic it is. It's a long game, but 
it's definitely a must play. And since you got the time, and this is a game that requires you to beat it multiple times to see the true Ooh, ending. I know what game this you're talking about. is near Automata. This game is a action RPG. Surprise, surprise. That seems to be all I play. Um, but it has a very interesting uh, post-apocalyptic world, kind of what we're living in now, except the aftermath, maybe. Who knows? All the humans are dead. The cities are overgrown with nature. Uh, you play as a super awesome android named B2. Um, for the first time you play the game, the yeah. other times you play as different characters. Yeah. But... This game is totally surprising because I didn't really know too much about this game when I first played it. I knew it a little bit still, of it. It was still kind of new when I first played it, but uh, I gotta get through it, that one. It it is it, it is so awesome. It it's made by you know Platinum wow. Games, so you got the cool combos for the action stuff, but you also level up. Uh, the story is very weird but cool. Um, you know, it requires you to play this game multiple times in order to see the true ending of the game. Um, if you can say it has a true ending, it's kind of like if you want to see other endings to the game. Um, it even has an ending if you die on the very beginning of the game. You just get a straight-up game over, and the game, like, has credits and everything. So uh, it has a lot of stuff like that, but... uh. DLC, yeah, it, the DLC is actually really fun because apparently you fight the CEO of Square Enix. Yeah, yeah, it's got fun stuff like that in it, but the actual world is super cool to the, to explore. Oh, uh, speaking um, of Nier, um, I forgot to tell you about this. I don't know if you know about this, but they're remaking, um, not remaking, remastering the original Nier. But, yeah. But we're getting the Japanese version now. Yeah, I know, I know, but... Yeah, you don't need to know anything about the original Nier no, really to play don't. Nier Automata. Um, um, it's super awesome. It has a lot of different gameplay styles in it, too. Maybe maybe not a lot, but like at least three I can think of off the top of my head. So, yeah. uh, Just so just before we end this podcast, um, do you have anything else to say? Like about the game? Uh, no, no. I guess, I guess that's it. I mean, it's an awesome make, game. I wanted to make uh, sure. So you know, at the recording of this time of April of April 10th, um, at this time, I'm just saying just so you guys go comment saying it's not here. Um, Final Fantasy 15 Windows Edition and Final Fantasy 15 on Xbox are on the Game Pass. So you guys can download it right now if you want. And Nier Automata is also on Game Pass as well. There you go. Yeah, so I'm just I just figured I'd put those dates in there. Just so you guys can play them. So, like, if you guys are Xbox people who own it, I we we just these are games we recommend if you have Game Pass. So, so this Even is, if you don't have Game Pass, they they're usually discounted on PlayStation Four. So yeah, I got mine for like thirty at the time when it was getting discounted. Sometimes it'll go down to fifteen. Yeah. So for that for near and everything, PlayStation I always see them get discounted so much. But anyway. Anyway, the point is, it's like we just want to make sure you guys are aware of that, so you guys have other ways of at least buying it and doing social distancing, and at least having ways of killing time. So, like I said, I got I, we picked our five games. I think we know we we would pick. Um, if you guys have a couple games you would pick out for RPGs for us, or just you know talk about, it, put it in the comments down below underneath the YouTube video tab. Like, favorite, and subscribe. And as always, I'm Kyle. This is my hetero life mate. My, my, wait, not gay, Chris. Not gay, Chris. <laughs> We're not gay. Oh, man, Kyle. Uh, oh, come on. I had to do a Silent Bob thing, okay? You woke like Just because of the hat. I have crazy hair. And the, and the, and the, and the glasses, because Kevin Smith wears glasses sometimes, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, right. I just have crazy hair and didn't feel like putting hair gel in my yeah. hair today. I wake up like this, so. Yep. But uh, this has been the Media Verge Podcast, signing out. Have a good one, everybody.